go. Got lots of bars around this town. Guys What's up guys, we are here in Nashville for our very first Traffic and Funnels event. And so we've got an awesome episode that you have to watch the whole way through. <laughs> you kidding me right now? <laughs> the sun is good. A great grief. Spot, it's a great spot to lay down and have Gosh. a Gosh. Okay. All right. I'm done, man. You sure? Yeah. We are holding our first event for our clients where we've literally had people come fly in from around the world. So this is an exclusive look just for you guys where we dive in and we talk about the early days of traffic and funnels. So I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and we'll continue to give you guys some more amazing content. Morning routine. ACDC, Britney Spears, <laughs> Nicki Minaj mix up. He's literally in the car on the way over here screaming his guts out. It's so embarrassing. He literally won't take his headphones off, so you can't even talk to him. 11? 11, yep. Thanks, Carissa. Yep, no You're awesome. So are we. He's so out of it right now. Hello. What? I'm oh, hey. Oh, hey. What are you Hi. Guys doing here? <laughs> wow. We have two camera angles so we can switch back and forth really fast. Oh, my gosh. Oh. favor get on your feet and let's welcome Chris and Taylor for our first session yo what's up we were driving over here and he's playing ACDC yelling in my car Terrifying. It's part of my morning formula. <laughs> What's up? You guys feeling good? Yeah. We're super pumped that you're here. I think we should talk about the early days of TF. Do you guys want to hear about that? Yeah. Go ahead, you start. We uh, we had this idea to do traffic funnels in 2015. We were doing agency stuff. So I was writing copy. Chris was, I don't know what you were doing. It doesn't matter. We were like, we should start a consulting offer teaching people what we're really good at. I had been doing freelancing for like less than a year. You had been in the game for a really long time. And so I sent an email to my list. I had like 90 people, maybe 100 people on my list. My whole family was on the list. So that accounted for like 15. My mom had- At seven, least 30. My mom had seven email addresses on my email list. Yeah. And She's was, our biggest fan for sure. And so I just uh, emailed out and I was like, hey, we're potentially taking clients to help you do cool stuff using the internet. <laughs> and we had like five people apply. Each of them had different needs. So the first one, is this too much detail? No. Tell me if this is too much detail. This is kind of embarrassing, but the first, the first person was like a photographer and he needed help with his photography business. So I was like, we're actually specializing in photography. Business. We're really good at that. <laughs> 
So we can totally help you. And then uh, the second person was real estate. A no, a copywriter. That was like our first taste of consulting. We had just been building machines for these big businesses, but we never actually went direct to the client or to the consumer. We were always building it for someone else. So we did three clients on, on a Friday afternoon and freaked out. It was like, oh my gosh, we're freaking rich. It's three clients at 3K. Like, I don't ever have to worry about money again. <laughs> and then it hit the fan. And it, caught, it kind of sunk in that like, oh, we have to provide for these clients now that we just took their money. And it was, it was a scary feeling. This person just paid me and they're gonna be angry if I don't like help them. <laughs> and it was like the weekends. They might ask for their money back. Like, what do we do? Like, Chris has already spent it all. We did that for like 15 clients. And at this point, we had an amazing training program. And it was an amazing, we delivered it. It was an amazing, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> we sent people a Dropbox link to a bunch of videos. That was our program. And we built it as we went. Totally built it as we went. We didn't pay ourselves for like six months. We just kept it all in an account. And we'll talk about like kind of how we figured out organic and how we figured out traffic. But those were the early days and we just did everything. And we got up to about 120 grand a month. Did I miss anything? Well, the, you know, we, were, we both still had our own things that we were doing yeah. while we were doing TF. Yeah. And you know, there's this, this thing when you guys are coming into this place where you're building out your offer. We have to have like absolute belief in what you're doing and the people that you're helping. And just to be like vulnerable with you guys, like I struggled being a fa father for coming from a place of having to survive for a long time. We have this thing that, you know, it's impacting people and we're seeing results and we're, we're signing clients. So obviously we validated that people want what we have. But there was still this thing of like, oh my God, I don't know if I can actually step out and just go all in on this thing. Because I still had this thing like that was secure, where I had these clients and I was, I was just in it, I was getting the major results, but it wasn't a part of what we were doing with TF. And so Taylor was like, dude, stop being a little, mm. a, little mm. a little sissy. Let's just go. And obviously, you know, he's young and no kids. <laughs> just doesn't understand no, Chris, the weight of the here's, world. Here's the exact conversation. I have my memory is photographic. Like I know what exactly what happened. He does not have a photograph. Chris, <laughs> Chris was making, can I tell him what you're making? Yeah. You're making like 7,800 a month, More making millions of dollars for this person. Yeah. And we're doing like 20 grand a month. And Chris is like, I can't quit until we're at 50K a month. I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, we barely started, we're doing 20K a month. Like, you're not, I was like, you're not an entrepreneur if you can't quit. And he got really mad. I was like, you know what, bro, screw you. He was like, I'm your, I could be your dad. <laughs> I'm like, actually, Go Taylor, think about it. I need to tell you. And so over Christmas break, <laughs> this is why we can't, can't have nice things. Over Christmas break, he didn't tell me, but he quit. You quit. You were like, here's my notice. I'm done. January 1, 2016, went full time. And we went like this, and then we started going like this. Because <laughs> yeah, when you we grow did. really fast, it's dangerous. Like, you may have experienced yeah. that where you have like a really big month. And then, like, you're, you're like, I'll never have up. another problem ever again. But, and then you like, the next week, you're looking up, like, depression counselors <laughs> because Xanax where I gotta get some of that stuff that happened to us like in January we had an amazing month and in February we went down and made less than we made in December it was like horrible we we're freaking out we we're like you know this is this was a fluke there like, we shouldn't have quit our clients like maybe the economy changed at the end of January the economy was definitely crashing and I knew it. this is where you learn like your brain will literally psych you out of any momentum as soon as you get one small thing that comes against you, you will literally start justifying mathematically how you can't keep going. And we learned that early. Yeah. And now we just ignore it. We're like, oh, we're having a bad month. Let's just Jonathan spend more money, back ourselves into a corner, you know? Yeah, so January we did like 123. 127. And then 127. one of them refunded. Had a refund. And then February we did 40. Like 38. 38. So obviously that's kind of depressing. When you come out and like you, you're, you're all in, like you know, we did 127. Like okay, we like we definitely have this Dude, figured out. Ballers. I'm like, I took my wife to Red Lobster. <laughs> we like got the king crab legs. 127k. I'm like, can do yeah. this every day. And I'm like, we we can't ever go to Red Lobster again. Like we just did 38 grand. 
Babe, get some peanut butter and some bread. Peanut butter, jelly, ramen yeah. noodles. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. And we had a we had a mentor, and I think one of the keys for us was we had a mentor who had seen the ups and downs and was able to say, "Hey, this is actually normal. You guys aren't crazy. The economy is not messed up. You just need to keep doing the right thing." And that saved us. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I want to go back and talk a little bit more detail on the path from when we first started to when we got to January, because first it was organic. You know, Taylor had like 20 actual people on his email list. We got them on the phone. We didn't know what we were doing. It was a jerk. Sold, sold them. No, man, like that was really awesome. That's cool, man. You had that. Yeah. Sold them. And as soon as we started getting credit cards, we're like, okay, we have to go to paid ads. And I think a mistake that people make is they wait. The thing about paid ads and webinars or VSLs or whatever you're actually using, it gives you the opportunity to build momentum. You know, in the early stages, like we gunned it to yeah. get a webinar. As soon as we validated, as soon as we proved that people wanted what we had, they would give us a webinar that we could, you know, exchange our services for. Because at that time, we were actually still doing agency. Like we were doing done for you. We were kind of doing everything. Because a lot of times, we try to perfect everything before we actually go to market. And I don't know if you guys have heard my story when I've launched stuff. And have you heard that story when I, I launched the course? Yeah, again. But I launched this course and I spent like six months building this thing. Like the videos were pristine. The content was, it was, I, mean, I like thought it was like watermarks on it. Like yeah, branding. it had intros and like the members area was like glorious and everything was just amazing. And I was like, you know, this is gonna be badass. This is gonna make me so much money. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna change my life. And so it was, it was like a six month period when I invested time, money, resources into building that thing. And so when I actually took it to market, nobody wanted it. It tanked, it bombed, and I just went into depression. That's like the one time I got emotional. But that, you know, just seeing the contrast, and I see a lot of people fail because of that, that they try to perfect something before they actually get a credit card. And as soon as we got credit cards, we're like, dude, let's go to paid ads. Let's start building some momentum, building more opportunity for us. Because what you have to understand is like the time that you have to invest in actually figuring out the delivery of what you're doing, you know, because that's, there are going to be issues there. Like maybe you start doing one on one and then you have to transition to group and like figuring out how all that works and ties together while you're still like juggling opportunity over here and getting people on the phone. So you can actually make money while you're over here, like figuring out the fulfillment and delivery and all that kind of stuff. So that's why we jumped to the automation stuff as quick as we could. And that just bought us more opportunity to kind of figure out, okay, what are we doing up here? What's the best way to efficiently deliver? And obviously at that point, it was like a Dropbox box link, like literally. And we just built it as we win. And one thing, like you guys should write this down, don't create problems before you have them. And so a lot of you do that. Like you're creating problems like, oh my God, well, what if I like, you know, I've got like 30 people in my program. Well, like, should I do like a group thing? And should I set up Kajabi and all this stuff? Like nobody cares about that. People just care about results. You guys or, getting this? Or when people are like, what if I have too many clients? What if you do, bro? That's, that's awesome. In fact, Jenna told me in the back she thought we were a scam because we don't have a good website. <laughs> good one. Good one, Jenna. That's the thing. Like, We don't spend any time on our website. We don't really... There, yeah. You guys know 80-20, 80-20 principle. We are like, if anything, we're good at the 20%. And there's 80% stuff that we just ignore. I think we've proven that you don't have to be good at that much. <laughs> it's only a couple things. And it's about figuring that out. And if you figure that out, then you're, really, you're not going to worry about money ever again. And that's life changing. All right, guys. We need to ask you a very serious question. Don't lie to us. Do you like what we're putting down for you? Do you appreciate the content. Do you smell what we're stepping in? <laughs> if the answer is yes, we need you to click the red button of love and subscribe to the show. All right, we're not going to take anything from you. We're give, 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 give. And uh, we love feedback. Don't we love feedback? We love we it. We just love feedback love it, love more it, love than it, love ice it, love cream. It. It's better than anything. Right. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. And uh, if you want us to talk about something more, put that in the comments. If you want us to never talk about anything again, put that in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're awesome. Anything to add? No. 
do it.